efficiency fans, and welcome back to Munich, Germany. We are here coming to the conclusion of our two days of Power Pack coverage at Salonis' Celesphere. My name is Savannah Peterson. Been riding this wonderful ride with Rob Strasse the entire time. We've had such cool guests. We have, and I, I, I think we're still have a few that I am really excited to see, especially this next one, uh, because you know, when you write the book on it, it's kind of one of those things that you, you must know what you're talking about. Or at least you think you do. <laughs> <laughs> Without further ado, Lars, thank you so much for joining us today on the show. You're you're an evangelist, you're an author, you're a Salonis fan, and you're also a Salonis former customer. Correct? Absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. Done it all. Started with Salonis 10 years ago, 2014. You know, so that's when I was with Siemens. Siemens is the early days. I felt like these guys, wow, they got a different different um, pitch which they can do there. You know, in respect of not doing KPIs, but processes. But not that part, it started with Siemens. And since then, I've been addicted to process mining. I think, you know, that addiction is something that I think everyone in this room shares. Mm. Every, it's not just, oh yeah, I like my job, or this is an interesting new innovation. There is truly a fervor around process mining here. And, and it's refreshing to, because it unlocks so much potential impact, how did they, so actually I'm curious because I've been really impressed by the recruitment of the Salonis team from, from recruiting Will to a bunch of different folks on their squad. How did you come to the team? Did you, did you stop opt-in yourself because you thought it was really cool and innovative? No, I mean, you know, I've been working with Siemens for, for 25 years. And if you were Siemens as team executive, you'd be like, wow, this is interesting sign, but really do you make the move, you know, really do you change here? And, and uh, it, it took me some time to be honest, you know, but at a certain point in time I recognized that this is working differently than a Siemens does. This is providing different opportunity in influencing, in scaling, and exciting people there, and exciting motion and transformation. And that's why in 2021, when they came again to me and saying, hey, why don't we want to join, and why don't we come to our side of the, of the, of the coin here, I felt like, yeah, why not? Let's be part of that, uh, of that amazing story of the uh, as As starting out as a customer, I, I think one of the things we've been asking the customers all along is, where do you get started? Because I think when people think about process, you know, especially when in the olden days, when I, when I was doing it, process re-engineering, yeah. and it was it was such a heavy lift for organizations. Where do you see, and what do you recommend for customers for where they should, or even prospects, where they should really hone in on that first use case? Right. You know, I mean, the, the learning which I had in the beginning when we started Siemens, we started in very small niche cases, and we started very much tech-driven. We said, hey, we got a capability. We can show you an X-ray here. You know, we can show you your extra processes. And we said, oh, that's interesting, but I got a thousand other priorities. I got a thousand other things to do, you know? So a key learning has been that coming from a technology capability, from KPIs, and it, 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 it's not really exciting, you know? And that's why I think this journey with Stellonis has made to come from a business impact, from a business value, how you can drive transformation, engage a sponsor to drive scale at scale. That has been a whole different game in there. So at Siemens, my journey has been that initially we looked into ticket payments, we looked into payment term deviations, we looked into you know manual touches, so minor things in little silos. And then we started scaling in 2017 when we connected to a sponsor, a CFO saying, I want to transform my order to cash process big time. And we said, okay, we can help you. With this big goal target, we can help you. To transform it, we can make it measurable. We can make it tangible. So we build up a, a transparency which allows him to eliminate 10 million menu touches in one year, you know? So at scale, you know? And that's the fun part, where all of a sudden you feel like it's not only cool technology, but it's also something which is bringing value to the organization, acknowledgement to the sponsors, and making me good since I'm doing something exciting for the company. It's, it's bringing value at scale to enterprise across verticals, too. It's yeah. not just to one niche of our world, but actually to the whole planet, which makes it very exciting. Rob mentioned you're an author. You wrote a book on it. It sounds like there's a really cool process behind your book. A little birdie <laughs> told me right before we went live. Yeah. Tell us about what you written and put into the world and how that came to be. Yeah, I mean, the book, you know, the book, the, the idea of the book came that I felt like there's so many exciting experiences, so many companies who are doing great things now with, uh, with process intelligence. And uh, I've been speaking to many, many companies across those 10 years. And uh, so I asked them, hey, why don't we write a joint book where you share your use case, where you share your challenge, where you share your pitfalls and experiences, you know? And I was, I was blessed. I was blessed to get 
PepsiCo, to get Kimberly Clark, to get BMW, you know, Siemens, to share their experiences in 10 to 15 pages. So I felt like, okay, it's exciting to write a book, but also on the personal side, you know, I thought, how do I make this a funny, happy path for myself, you know? Yeah. So I had my preparation side part, and then I told my wife, look, I mean, I'm writing a book, and writing a book is quite where you need to have your own time off, you know, where you need to have your time where you can focus, concentrate. 100%. And I said, I need to have four weeks off. And what I did, I got her a ticket, approval, and I went to Jamaica, you know? So I went to Jamaica. Great choice. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was going to say. Perfect writing. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a good place to go. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect by, by Airbnb. I picked a nice location there in, in Jamaica, and it turned out that this location is just 50 miles away from a spot where Ian Fleming wrote all his same spot books. Okay. Which inspired me, you know? So I felt like, okay, this is something which probably has to read wow. again every year. You know, yeah. that's good fun. So did, you, did, you, did you know that when you booked it? No, no, no. I went here, I went there, and then I, I, I cruised around, and I saw, oh, all the James Bonds are coming from, from that area. Yeah. That is so yeah. cool. So great minds, obviously, think alike. Yeah. But, you know, the one thing is that uh, if, you look my, if you read my book, The Pros and Cons Connection, it's much more valuable than reading a James Bond. Let me tell you why. Yeah, let me <laughs> let, tell you why. Let, I am intrigued. Yeah. yeah. My attention yeah. I mean, what is the key learning which you take from a James Bond book or a James Bond novel? You learn to take your martinis to your I was going to say martinis, uh, romance, and evasion of authorities. <laughs> exactly. That's what you take. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, you know? Yeah, yeah. If you read my book, you know, you know how to drive transformation, scale big, and make a career. I mean, <laughs> I'm a fan of that, okay? And um, so, the so second point, if you try to make any of those tricks which James Bond is doing in his book, I mean, this is scary. Just imagine you're doing those stunts, you know? If you do any of the tricks which you all are describing in my book, you look great. Right. <laughs> do you think there are processes that James Bond should have optimized in each one of his Especially with Money Penny and Q <laughs> and all of that. But some complexity. <laughs> yeah, some complexity. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I, 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 I look at the book and I, I just, you know, we were talking off set here a little bit and I, I said, you know, having been on the IT side myself and been in data centers and run data centers and been involved in multiple different business unit discussions around processes, I, it's getting buy-in. And mm-hmm. it's one question we've been asking from people, and it seems like the book is a good way, and I'm wondering because I haven't read it yet, but I will. Mm-hmm. I'm very interested in understanding yeah, how, sign copy over here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How, do people, how do people really get into convincing their organization to go down this path because yeah. it's not just the technology. Yeah, it's not. It's the people. It's not. It's, it's the people thing. It's, it's multiple things. First of all, you have to get gain the trust. Okay? You have to have your first use case where people recognize, oh, wow, that's amazing. You know, I've had two ticket payments, which I didn't know. Oh, somebody showed me. I said, stick money there. Or Cardinal Health took my bill, $35 million. Wow, nobody would have believed it. So you have a foundation. You have a foundation which you can build on. And then it's about exciting a sponsor. Saying, dear sponsor, I've shown it here. I tell you, if we scale across the organization, there's already said 35 million, but there's whatever, hundreds of millions. But I need you as a sponsor to drive it. And one chapter in the book is written for, by a guy from, uh, from San Gobel, Mathieu Levy, who's writing about executive sponsorship, who's writing about his CFO is sponsoring him, saying, I need to transform big time, you know, as a CFO. Yeah. And I trust you, Mathieu, to make it happen. Since you've shown you've done it, and I know you can do it, you know? But then again, it's not only the change maker who's driving it, it's the change maker needs to push up the hill, you know? But the sponsor who starts to generate this pull by telling the people in charge that this is first owners, you have to move, you have to improve, and much sure if you're facilitating. So that's the mechanism which we're seeing working very, very powerful. We, it is, it is powerful. Uh, honestly, we could talk about book analogies. I'm writing a book right now, too, and you talk about how hard it is and you need to take time and set it aside. You could not be more right. Shout out to Jen, my writing partner. I'm actually going to see my writing partner in Berlin tomorrow after this, so we were, we were right on the pulse there. Shifting gears just, just a little bit, we were talking a lot about the energy. You know, we're, we're all vibing, like you said. Our minds are really excited. Our bodies are starting to feel that we're at the end of a very fun and and uh, enthralling week that's not always rich with sleep. It feels like, and we've been talking about this on the desk, it feels like process mining is having a moment. Like there's a real acceleration and adoption mm. across industry, uh, you know, across the enterprise. You've got 400 partners now building and working with you on the platform. 
Do you agree? Does this feel like a magic moment? It's an evolution. It's an evolution which is accelerating. You know, since yeah. I've been doing the motion for 10 years, I've seen like the process mining, which we did a couple of years ago, which was more than mining and visualizing. And now it's been the intelligence saying, based on that insight which we have, what intelligence can we bring in there by proactive alerting, by doing extra flows, by doing automation. And now what we what we now the agency, the AI, which will give it a whole different booster. You know, but if you think about if you have a platform which understands your processes, understands the inefficiency of your processes, and then with AI enabled, can accelerate that, there's a whole different game. The other thing which I'm seeing here, which I'm really enjoying, is the, the caliber of participants, the caliber of discussion. You yeah. know, like three years ago, four years ago at, at Telosphere, there were many people where you have to tell, okay, what is process mining? What are you doing? Now, everybody knows about it. Everybody knows. Everybody has put a finger in the honeypot. Everybody now says, I got text and tell me how to accelerate, you know? And we get very senior people here who are coming from a transformational perspective, not yeah. coming from a single use case, but right. saying, I want to transform my supply chain across the organization. So a whole different game, which is, which is happening. So yeah. that's the other thing which I'm seeing accelerating. Yeah, and, and not even just the supply chain. They want to transform every process, every single action that happens across the enterprise, which is really exciting. All right, last question for you. Since we're obviously going to be bringing your enthusiastic self back on when we're here again this time next year, what do you hope to be able to say then that you can't yet say now? Well, first, I mean, hopefully I've, I've written a book, not trust intelligence in action, but agency in action, you know, again, yeah. these four weeks in Jamaica, but I'm not sure where it's happening. Love this. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> but what I think what, what, what we're going to bring in here is much more how AI has enabled companies to detect process inefficiencies and eliminate these. How AI has enabled companies to move towards the autonomous enterprise, you know, become much more efficient. But that's the big, big thing which we which is seeing. Well, we can't wait to talk about it with you, Lars. Thank you so much for sneaking us in today during your very busy week. Rob, always a treat. Yet another fantastic guest. You weren't kidding, and, and I, I didn't know we were going 007, but, but here we are, <laughs> folks. I'm into it. Now I just need a martini. Hopefully that's coming up now. Thank all of you for tuning in with whatever beverage you may have in your hands. I promise it's just water in this cup. We're in Munich, Germany at Salona Cellosphere. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news. Thank you.